Now more to the integration with our Java EE application to the event store. As I said, we're using Apache Kafka as an event store, and this is now the classes how it is connected with each other. So there are a couple of classes necessary to produce and consume events. Here, the event producer is the first one. That is the class that will produce an event using the Apache Kafka producer. That means we um, create a new producer with the properties that are injected using a CDI producer. And then we create so-called producer records that are just single events that are published to a topic. In that case, it's the order event producer. So it's published to the order topic and sent and flush. Now, if you look at the properties, they are injected. I can show you that as a CDI producer. Here, they are loaded and then can be injected using the Java properties type. And if we now configure anything, uh, everything here, in our case, and I don't want to talk to about, um, too much about Kafka, but we just want to make sure that everything, as I said, is published and consumed in a reliable fashion. So this was the reason why I chose Apache Kafka, because it make, can make sure that we can produce and consume in between transactions. So if we send and flush an event and say for the consumer side auto commit false rather than we commit um, every time we want to, then Kafka ensures that everything is sent reliably. And if not, then it will be resent later if the application is up again in case of an outrage. And here we just send and flush the event and that's basically it. Then Apache Kafka gets the event on the specific topic and will later on, and that is the, the case of the split up transactions, consume, um, call the consumers. So first of all, we just produce the event and send it to the event store, but reliably, and then we return immediately and carry on in our application. And later on, then the consumers will be called also in a reliable fashion. And how that works, so this is, as I said, just for the orders module. And also for the orders module, we have two consumers, the updating consumer on each and every module and each and every instance that updates the internal view representation and the event handler consumer that will then later on trigger new commands and fire new events themselves to in order to process the business logic further. The updating consumer will consume for a group, a Kafka consumer group. And the way this works is, and this is actually the, the concept behind that we want to consume the events to update on each and every instance and consume the events for new event handling, for new commands only once, reliably once, but only once in the whole application, no matter how many instances we have. And in Kafka, there are so-called consumer groups. And if we um, subscribe to a consumer group, and it's a, or actually we tell we are part of a consumer group, then this consumer group will exactly once get that new fired event. And that means in our case, every updating consumer gets its own consumer group and all the event handlers share one, no matter how many instances there are. Um, in order to do so, we, we have a UID that's here just created randomly for the updating consumer and for the event handler, we have a single one, no matter how many um, instances we fire up. And then what we have to do here, and this is the reason why I included an own class that is a runnable, because as we are in an EE environment, we do not want to have leaking resources after we shut down our server. And actually the Kafka consumer has to be stopped, which um, is done using um, close and wake up exceptions. So as we call Paul here, that actually pulls for new events and that may take some time. So it actually blocks. So that has to be done in a separate uh, thread. And if we shut down now our application, 
while that is still blocking, then a wake up exception has to be um, has to be thrown, and we we do so using this stop mechanism. So this is actually um, it's also described in the the Kafka tutorial um, um, documentation, and we integrate that using a runnable that is then executed via standard Java E mechanisms, the managed executor service. And then on the pre-destroy of our consumer that is reliably called from the application server, we can stop the event cons uh, consumption. And this is equally done on the updating consumer side and the event handling side. The only difference here now is that we subscribe to different topics. As the updating consumer, and then this is, um, de depends on how you model your events, is only interested in the order events. And the event handler is interested in everything else, so everything that comes from other modules, right? So that's interested in barista and beans because when later on the beans get validated, then we say, oh, now something happens and that's interested in these events. Just what happens, it fires own CDI events. So this is the integration with Apache Kafka plus CDI. So that is just the Apache Kafka site and that is somewhat encapsulated in our application and everything else can be done using CDI and we do not have to have to care about Kafka. We just make sure that if we somewhere in our application inject the event producer and publish an event, then it's done reliably and that at some point in time, new events may happen that are actually triggered by the obtaining consumer or event handler. And that's basically how the integration with Kafka works. So one word about the version and the snapshots, because, because what we can do in Kafka, and this is also the point uh, um, behind the consumer groups, if we say we do, um, where is it here? We do a commit and we don't have an auto commit, that means if we commit to some event that has been consumed, then we tell Kafka, okay, now we got the event reliably. Either we have handled it properly or we have stored it away in a database persistently and so on and so forth. But you can carry on. We don't need it anymore. We um, guarantee you that we have handled it. And then Apache Kafka will, for the same consumer group, not send it again because it has been consumed reliably. And that is actually um, the way how snapshots can be modeled here. If, for example, you say, now I consume the events and once in a while I just store them away wherever you like, for example, in a database persistently, and then I tell the consumer, okay, commit. Now I got everything and everything afterwards will be then resent just in case if at that very moment the application goes down and everything before that has been committed is safe in our database, for example. That is one way of how we could implement uh, snapshots here without even needing to care about the version that is actually also sent as well. So what I've done here in the properties, I'm tell them, please, if we have a new consumer group, then give us all the events, the early um, events from day zero, and that will be applied. But if the uh, same consumer group comes up again, then just give us the ones that haven't, hasn't been committed yet. And that is the way how this can be done. Because now, and the singleton that stores, for example, all the domain objects can now potentially be enhanced with a database. So each and every event that comes in can then, once in a while, be persisted and then committed to Kafka. And if that application then goes down and comes up again, then it will load the latest actually event automatically, the latest state that is somewhere in the database. It doesn't have to be the event because that's just the internal view representation. However, it's normalized or not. And then every new event that hasn't been committed on will come in when the application reconnects. And now, and I um, told you here in that example, the modules are not split up in write and read side in terms of that they are not um, 
deployed twice so deployed separately but together but actually if you want to model your um, your persistence side differently on both the write and the read side you can do so because for example if you have the read side then it wouldn't make much sense to go for a relational database as a normalized form is not optimized for reading but to take any other storage you like either no um, sql database or only just in memory or um, to a file whatever you uh, may like and the right side may totally look different however it is um, it is optimized too so that's actually and uh, that's free for uh, each and every um, application and each and every instance actually so the instances are totally um, self-contained and do not care about any others and having that said we can fire up as many instances as we like now using that model because with the Apache consumer groups we make sure that for example the event handling is done only once and the consumption is done everywhere and once we fire up a new one that it will get reliably all the events and that's how the integration with in our case, Apache Kafka as an event store plus Java technology works.